Anybody else got a prayer request? Okay, we'll pray for you, brother. Anybody else desire prayer? The Bible says we should pray for one another. Amen? Amen. And then remember, like I said, uh, the country, the country's in really bad shape. We need to pray that God will help our country. Amen? Yeah. Pray for our nation. And pray for one another. Pray for our community that God will bless our community. Amen? Anyone else got a prayer request? You're all quiet today, <laughs> which that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. The Bible says, study to be quiet. How many knew that? Yeah, study to be quiet. Amen. How about stand with me then, and we'll go to prayer and we'll ask the Lord's blessing. Father God, we come to you now in Jesus' name, and we pray for our nation. We pray for uh, President Trump, his family, and all those people that were shot. We, we don't know who they were yet, but two or three bystanders were shot. And so uh, one of them I heard lost his life or her life. And it's just really a tragic, tragic event taking place in our nation. But we're just praying that God, that you'll help us and help our nation recover from such things as this. Lord, also we pray for our church today. We pray for our community. God, we're asking that you remember each and every person that attends our our church here today, and uh, as we pray for our community, we pray that we'll be a light among the darkness, oh God. We ask the Lord now to bless this time, bless this service as we come together, and that we give God glory and praise, and, and that we uh, offer our ten-string instrument up to Him, yes. and we give Him thanks again. Bless this day, bless yes. the people, bless the requests that were mentioned for family members today, and we pray for them. Remember tonight's service, our fellowship meeting, God, that you'll bless it tonight, too. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Welcome into this presence.
become closer in Christ. And we need to become stronger. We're stronger together than we are apart. apart. Amen? Amen? You take a piece of thread and and turn it around and weave it with, what, uh, probably 10 or 15 other strands of thread, it becomes a little rope. And it's hard to break. That rope becomes a, so tough it's hard to break. But you take just one strand, and guess what? You can snap it just like that. How many know that? One of us could put a thousand of light, but the Bible says if two of us come together, we could put ten thousand of light. Ten thousand. Think about if three of us come together, guess what? Multiply that by a hundred thousand. Amen. Amen. And four by a million. And before you know it, we're talking about what we can really do powerfully in Christ. Amen. So it's important that we come together, we bleed together, we pray together. We work together in the Lord. Can you say amen to that? And so I want you to know that. July the 31st. Also, we'll probably be talking about our church potluck, what we're going to be doing doing that. And I'm thinking about opening it up to a district potluck, uh, making it a district. I'd like the other churches to come. Would you guys like to see that happen, maybe? And so we could invite the other churches on our district to come. I'm going to present this to the pastors and let them know that and, uh, it's the homecoming that we get. And so uh, we'll probably just invite the other pastors. I'll ask them if they're interested in coming. May not have that, a whole lot of people come out, but you never know. My desire one day is to have a singing group come and we can really promote a gospel singing. Would that be cool? Uh, I'm working on that. The family that I had in mind, he has come down uh, sick recently, and so we're going to have to pray that God will heal him up, and he'll be able to make it maybe the next time. Amen. Nevertheless, I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward and to receive this morning tithe and offer. It's good to have this family back in church. They've been here a lot. Amen. They got up face up and they got their feet in there. Through surgeries and all types of weird things taking place. Well, the devil don't like you, but God does. I want you to know. Amen. The devil don't like you, but God does, and we do too. Amen. We love it. Amen. Let's pray over the offering today. Father God, bless this offering today, and bless these families as they come together. As we give unto the Lord, we are so blessed and thankful to be in our, our small church, but we're thankful for the small church. We ask you now to bless it and just touch each and every person's life. As, they, as you bless them and prosper them again, oh God. Just bless and prosper everyone here, God. Bless us all in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen. Were you there when they crucified the Lord? Were you there?
your thoughts, O God, and that I submit myself totally unto you, O God. Let my body be submitted to you too, Lord, my mouth, my eyes, my ears. And Lord, uh, I pray for those, those that have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit will reveal to them. And bless them today. In Jesus' name we praise you. In Jesus' name we give. Amen. 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 Can we give the Lord a time out for today? Amen. Amen. The crown of righteousness. Last time we talked about the crown of rejoicing. How we will receive a crown of rejoicing because we will be so grateful and thankful that the Lord will place his crown upon us. And I don't know about you, but I, I rejoice today. How about you? I'm practicing up for that crown, Sister Ruth. How about you? <laughs> I'm practicing up for that crown one day because I'm going to receive it and I want to rejoice in the Lord. So the Bible says, Amen. Rejoice in the Lord. Amen. And clap your hands, all you nations. For that <laughs> For he has done his marvelous and wonderful works, the psalmist said. And so I want you to remember this today as we continue. There are five Christian crowns. We see the crown of righteousness, and the crown of life, and the crown of glory, and the incredible crown, and the crown of rejoicing. The crown of rejoicing was 1 Thessalonians 2. Verse 19, and I see we're kind of having a little bit of a technical problem there, but we'll work through it, amen? But tonight, or today, I should say, we're going to do the crown of righteousness found in 2 Timothy, amen, chapter 4, as we look on. As we continue, last time we talked about the crown of rejoicing, a victor's crown, which is one of the five that will be given unto God's people for their faithfulness in Christ. Our Lord and Savior said, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, verse 20, Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Every one of you been written down in heaven. That is something to rejoice about. That is something to be proud of. That is something to be excited about. You are going to heaven one day. We're not going to stay here buried in this old body all of our life. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. amen. We're going to go to heaven. We're going to receive the victor's crown. Amen. And so I want you to realize that today. As we continue today, we're to be witnesses before God and others. In 2 Timothy, as we begin our approach on the written scripture, therefore I solemnly witness before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who's going to judge the living and the dead according to his appearance and his kingdom. We are living witnesses today. We haven't received that crown of righteousness yet, but we're working towards it. We're working towards all these crowns. We haven't received none of them yet, but one day we will receive them all according to our labor in the Lord. It's important that you and I be about our Father's business. Can you say amen to that? They asked the Lord one time and found him in the temple, his mom and his dad. And he said, why are you here, son? We've been looking for you for several days. And he looked at his mother and he looked at his father, which was Joseph. And he said, I need to be about my father's business. And they didn't understand that, but he did. And so I want you to realize today, we need to be about our father's business. We need to be the will of God in our lives. Amen. And we're to be witnesses before God and others. As we continue here, the Bible says, preach the word. We must preach the word, but also live it. There are no shortcuts to find or take, for one must be willing to sacrifice all they have for him. We have to be willing to sacrifice in order to make it into his kingdom. Amen. For he said here, 2 Timothy 4 and 2, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, Reprove, rebuke, <laughs> exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. God expects us to be evangelists in our community, evangelists in our homes. And you say, well, pastor, it's hard for me to speak to people. Hey, Amen. You don't have to say a whole lot to people. They'll see you because of the way you live. They'll see your kindness. They'll see your rejoicement and your laughter. They know that you're a good person 
Because they can see your fruit, your works that you do. Can you say amen or that? You are a living testament. You are a living testament to Jesus Christ. You are a light. Every time you say something good, every time you encourage someone, that is a mark of great behavior the Lord is writing down. Amen. These are works that are undisputable. Amen. Keep doing the good work. You may not be a preacher like I am, but guess what? You can still live your life for Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 You don't have to turn around and take this place down. You can be a witness for him, for he sends it here to Timothy. Preach the word. Amen. Your family may not like hearing you talk about Jesus, but do it anyway. Can you say amen? My family used to get upset and walk out the door. Now they go to church. Can you say amen? Why? Because I preach the word. I kept it up. I said, I'm going to love you until you don't like me no more. And when you stop liking me, I'm going to still love you. Can you say amen? Why? Because I'm going to preach the word. Amen. I'm going to shout the victory. Man, I'll tell you what. Any old dead fish can go downstream. <laughs> Some say amen on there. Amen. But it takes a live one to go up. Hello? It takes a live one to go up the stream. But any old dead fish can go down. Amen. I don't know about you, but I want you to become what lively stones in Christ Jesus. I want you to be that new generation that will stand up and say, I will shout. I will praise, I will give God the glory, I will be a light in this world because of my Lord and my Savior. You want to know how many good friends you've got? Amen? Just pull the Bible out <laughs> and watch how many of them flee from you. Hello. That's why you've got to be careful and let your light shine. Amen? Preach the word. Be ready at all times. This is what is instant and season means. Means be ready all the time. Reprove things. If it's not right, rebuke. If you see your brother or your sister not living the way they should, the Bible says rebuke. It's better to rebuke than to let them know. You know how many times I had to rebuke people over the 50 years I've been pastor? <laughs> but later on they would come back to me and said, You were right, Pastor. What you said was the truth. And I had to learn it the hard way. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man, I want to make sure you make it to heaven. But you can't turn around and make it to heaven. <coughs> if you got things in your life that you don't want to address and take care of. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we got to be careful. We got to live it. We gotta live this book, amen. We gotta live it. We gotta live what it says. These ten commandments are not ten suggestions. I told you this before. They're not ten babies. <laughs> They're not ten nights. Well, I might do this, or I might do that. I might love the Lord. Then as it say that in Exodus chapter 20. So he said, These are my ten commandments. He said, I want you to honor them and do that. He said, love your father and mother. Can you say amen? amen? That you may live long upon the earth. I don't know about you, but that's a wonderful commandment. To love your parents. Amen. How many love your mom and dad? I do. They're both gone. But I love them. You think I like the weapons my dad gave me? That rebuke? <laughs> Someone say amen. 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 That's what made the man here that is here today is those rebukes. Son, son, I don't like you doing that. Whack, whack, whack. How many know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know how many times I'd go out and get my own switch? And if he didn't have a switch, he'd grab his old belt and pull it off. How many know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. He said, wow, I couldn't stand to have an abusive father like that. He was abusive. He, he just wanted me to make sure that I saw the light. Can you say amen? <laughs> he wanted to make sure I saw the light. <laughs> I'll never forget. One day, I was getting to be older, probably 13, 14 years old, 
And my dad looked at me. He looked at me with a broken heart. He said, son, I can't keep spanking you. You're turning into a man. He said, there comes a day, son, you've got to grow up. And after my dad said that, from that day on, I never gave my dad a, a problem at all. Because he sat down and he had that father to son talk. Yes. Yeah, he had that father to son talk. He said, you're just getting too big. You're old, son. He said, there comes a day you've got to act like a man. You've got to become a man that you're becoming. And I appreciate my father saying that. Amen? I think he said it wisely, what he said. Amen. Because guess what? All these concepts that he instilled in me are working today. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of it I deserve. How many deserve those spankings, huh? Yeah? Amen. Someone raise your hand and your feet. Amen. Go ahead. Preach the word. There will come a time that people will not listen. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heed to themselves teachers having his years. What is sound doctrine? Sound doctrine is, believe it or not, a doctrine that's marginalized with disdain. That doesn't apply to me today. That was for those early Bible people. That happened 2,000 years ago. That, no, that, doesn't, that isn't my problem now. That's not, I, I got a different view of the Bible than you do. You can't change the word of God. Jesus said that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Someone say amen. amen. Yeah. God hasn't changed nothing in his word. It's still the same. We're the ones that change. We're the ones that marginalizes it. Yes. We're the ones that take all the up and all the power out of it. And all the thought provokeness that we should have in it. We're the ones that rip the pages out of the Bible and say, that don't apply to me. Nope, that don't apply to me. That don't apply to me. Yes, it does. It's still the written word of God. Can you say that? <laughs> As we continue here, people will begin to retreat from a life of holiness. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall turn unto fables. A fable is a fictitious narrative or statement. It's a made-up story that's told over and over. As believers, we need to what? Live the truth. Walk it. Preach it. Share it. Believe it. Someone say it. Amen. This is a fable. This is a red word of God. See, we're getting away from what the word really is in our lives. Mm -hmm. Holiness. So the Bible says, be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. It's important. If we're, if we're to have this crown of righteousness, we're going to have to live a real good life. That means, thou shalt not steal. Some say amen or amen. 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 It doesn't say go and take it out of Walmart <laughs> free of charge. It doesn't say that. <laughs> you don't find it in the Bible. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not steal what it says. It doesn't say borrow. Go ahead and borrow it from Walmart. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> or borrow it from the caves. Oh, they won't need it. <laughs> Or borrow, can't borrow from the Salvation Army. Hey, they donated to them. They, it was already donated to you. Why should I have to pay for it again? Because it's not yours. Amen. It wasn't donated to you. It was donated to them. We live in a day and time where we feel like there's an entitlement spirit going on. Like, we deserve it. We don't deserve anything. Come on, think about it. We don't 
deserve anything. We should work for it. Can you say amen? If we can. I know there's things out there that are there to help us. But the Bible teaches us, amen, that we got to be careful. We need to pray for our food and ask God to help. I don't know about you, but I thank God for the food banks. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We need that. Yeah. Yeah. We need those food banks. You go to grocery stores and you can't even buy a bag of groceries without paying a hundred dollars for them. I don't know about you. And what I mean by entitlement is people that go in and, and take something that's really not theirs. That's what I meant by that. Otherwise, stealing. We're not supposed to steal. A while back here, someone was trying to steal gas out of my car, my truck. <laughs> and I went to fill the gas tank up. I mean, remember the old truck I got? Mm -hmm. Somebody was trying to steal gas out of them. What happened? They forced the lid that keeps the big nozzle from going in it, like a diesel nozzle. Mm -hmm. It's got a smaller nozzle just for unleaded regular gasoline. And all of a sudden it was broke. The guy filled it up and it started leaking. <laughs> he got up and said, boy, he said, your tank is leaking. He said, I'll tell you what happened. Somebody was trying to steal your gas, and they broke it. Oh. They broke the lid in there. That little lid that closes, the, keeps the fumes from coming mm -hmm. out. He said, you're going to have to take that to a mechanic to get it fixed. He said, you can't turn around and fill this truck completely up, or all the gas will leak past three quarters of the tank now. Whoa. And it was leaking. I probably lost a couple gallons of gas. Because someone didn't want to do the right thing. <clears throat> Wanted to steal our gas. And they'd done more damage. If he would have came to the house, I would have gave him the gas. I mean, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of me having to do an expensive repair now. Because right. I'm going to have to pay a mechanic to drop the gas tank and fix that in order to make it work properly. I can still use it like it is if I don't fill it up. Yes. But it just gives you an idea of sometimes people do more damage by doing these things. You see what I mean? And it's well to realize. A fable, again, is a fictitious story, a narrative or statement. It's a made-up story. This is what people are believing in these last days, fables. You can look out there, you can see the things that they're believing. But let me tell you something. It's, it's just not right. Amen? The Bible warns us of it. Amen? As believers, we're to be watchful and observant. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. But watch now in all things, in your afflictions. Do the work of the evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Otherwise, make full proof of thy witness to others. Be an example, a good example for people. And you can be a godly example. You can live a good life and, and still live in the world. How many of you agree with that? Mm -hmm. You can live a good life and live in the world. We're all in the world. How many know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. We all live in the world. We all came from the world. But we don't have to be of it. We know we're part of it. Yeah. We can still be with what? One another in Christ. That's where we gain our strength. That's where we gain our values. Iron sharpens up. I don't know about you. But if I'm not out stealing, guess what? You're not going to do it. Can you say amen? Why are you hanging around me? Amen? I don't know about you, but I'd rather hang around somebody that I know is not going to take something that I need. And I'm going to end up missing. How about you? Amen. So be careful. Be careful. Amen. This is what I want you Amen. Iron sharpens iron. Steel sharpens steel. All right? If you hang around me long enough, guess what? God's going to bless you. Can you say amen? You're going to feel the power of God in your life. You're going to feel those healings and those miracles come to you. Why? Because you're hanging around people, amen, that are sold out to Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? I'm going to hang around people sold out to God, amen? I want people to watch my back. I want you to watch my back. Man, I bump 
coming to you somewhere, I'm going to be thankful that I see you. Amen. Why? Because I know you got my, my thought, my best thought signal. Amen. And so I want you to remember this. The apostle said, I'm ready to go and I'm leaving this world soon. 2 Timothy 4 6, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I kept the faith. Paul said, I've done all I can do now. <clears throat> he said, there's nothing else I can, I can do that's left to do. But to offer us this advice. Stay in Christ. Be solid in your walk of faith. Amen. Do everything you can to help others. And do everything you can to pray for one another. Because one day we're all going to leave this world. Can you say amen? As we continue the crown of righteousness, here we go. 2 Timothy 4 and 8. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. And not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. If you're looking for Jesus to come back, guess what? You're going to receive that crown. How many believe Jesus is going to come back? Amen. I do. Amen. Hallelujah. How many he's coming back? Guess what? You're going to receive this crown. Because you're going to do everything you can to walk righteously, live righteously, be righteously. You're going to do everything you can. And I don't know about you, but all of us slip and fall. Is there anyone perfect around here? Raise your hand. Okay. Make sure you keep yours down there. We know you know. <laughs> Go ahead, Claire. Go ahead. <laughs> but none of us here are perfect. We're all going to blow it and make mistakes. Some of us are going to say something that's going to hurt someone's feelings. Or some of us are going to do something that will offend others. But does that make us any lesser Christian than them? No. Does that make us any worse than the person that, that we see every day? No. Or be, even better? No. What I'm saying is that we're, we're all going to do things and not realize we've done it until it's too late. But we can make it right. Can you say amen to that? I don't know about you, but it's okay. To apologize to people if their feelings are hurt. Now, sometimes people are not going to accept your apology. As a pastor, over the over the last 50 years I've been doing this, there's some people, not a lot of people, probably less than one on one hand, that I have offended personally and hurt their feelings. Because of something I said or something I didn't do. And the only thing I can do is ask them to forgive me. Mm -hmm. That's all I can do is ask you to forgive me. And hopefully you're spiritual enough and you're wise enough and you're mature enough to accept my apology. But if you don't, guess what's going to happen? We're going to end up breaking fellowship with each other. And that is the most sad thing. A while back I was talking to somebody a while back. And anyway, I mentioned to him, I said, well, if you break a fellowship with me, I said, don't you realize that in heaven we have to get along together? <laughs> if we can't get along together here, how are we going to get along together there? Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. yeah. If we can't get along together here, how are we going to do it up there? Go on here. I said, I understand you're hurt. And sometimes there's nothing you can do but just move on. My suggestion, if I ever hurt your feelings, come to me and talk to me about it. I don't want you to separate from the fellowship of the Lord. I want you to receive the blessing of God. I want to be your friend. Can you say that? I want to remain your pastor. I want to do everything I can. I'm like the Apostle Paul. 
If I eat meat because it's going to offend someone, I won't eat it no more. Yeah. What he was speaking about in the book of Corinthians, they were offering meat, sacrificing meat to idols, and what they would do with the leftover meat, they would sell it in the meat markets. Some of the Christians were buying it. Some of the other Christians never. They were buying this meat, and it offended them. The other Christians say, hey, man, I, I can't help it. This is discounted meat. It's good. I'm going to cook it. I'm going to eat it. The Apostle Paul said it to the church. He said, hey, if this meat is going to offend my brother, I'll quit buying it there. I'll quit, quit eating it in front of you because I don't want to lose my brother or my sister. Who is weak in the Lord? It's important that we do not lose one another in the Lord. It's important that we stay steadfast and unmoving, and that we work through our problems and our difficulties. Can you say that? Amen. 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 As we continue, what is this crown? Why is this so important? The crown of righteousness is the reward that is mentioned in the Bible for those who are righteous before God and love His appearing. It is one of the types of crowns in the heaven that will be given to the saints at the judgment seat of Christ. The crown of righteousness symbolizes the righteousness, the glory, and the life of the believers. This will be our glory when we receive this crown. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward one day when I receive my crown. Oh yeah, I know I will die when I end up gaining this crown. Don't know when I'm going to die. But when I die, I know I'm going to receive it. Can you say amen? I know where I'm going. How about you? Yeah. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up in the first resurrection. I'm going up. I'm going up. I'm going up in the Lord. They'll be coming from the east. They'll be coming from the west. Coming from the south. They'll be coming from the north. I'm going up, I'm going up, I'm going up in the Lord. Amen. As we continue the word righteousness speaks, acting in accord with divine or moral law. It means be free from the guilt of sin. Genesis 15 6. And he believed that the Lord encountered to him for righteousness. This is what he spoke about Abraham. As we continue here, an example of moral law, Leviticus 19, verse 15. He shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. For righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. True righteousness is showing no bias towards the poor or rich or the famous. We will judge accordingly or be judged accordingly. Judge by the facts and not by the hearsay. Someone say amen. 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 Bible says in one verse, don't even judge. If you don't know anything about it, don't judge. Let God take care of it. Can you say that? But if you have to judge, that means some of you might be called to jury duty. Some of you might be called to jury duty, and you're going to have to be the witness. You're going to have to be the person that makes a decision if that person is guilty or not. And guess what? You need to judge it by the facts, not by the hearsay. Amen? Amen. How many ever served on jury duty before? You know what I'm talking about. You have to be impartial. You have to be impartial. This is what the Lord has shared to the people here. We ran out of slides. The crown of righteousness. It's important that you and I be impartial. Even when it comes to our brothers and sisters in Christ. If you know a brother or sister are having a conflict, you need to pray for them. And you need to encourage them. The Bible says, is there any among you wise? Apostle, Apostle, why are you going to the court of law? You should be looking at wise people in your congregation and allow them to help you make a decision here. Do Christians sometimes get angry at each other? 
Would you please raise your hand? Mm -hmm. We all have. I can't believe that Nick done that. <laughs> I can't believe Larry did that. I can't believe Rachel did that. I can't believe what John did. I can't believe what Polly said. I can't believe it. I wouldn't have believed it unless I saw it with my own eyes and heard it with my own ears. Mm -hmm. If you don't want to have conflict in the church, pray for each other. Love each other. Be considerate to each other. And don't be jealous of each other. Because well, guess what? We're all going to the same place. Amen? Yeah. We're all going to the same place. Don't be jealous of each other. Well, the pastor cares more about Luke than he does me. <laughs> pastor cares more about John than he does me. How do you know I'm coming? Mm -hmm. The Bible says put away all the Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Come here and gather with me. We're going to gather in a circle.